Welcome to Local Matters. Today, we begin in Pembroke. For over 50 years, New England Village has provided support to individuals with disabilities and their families. Julie invited President and CEO Mike Rodriguez via Zoom to talk about their services and how they are adapting to our new normal. So pleased to have Mike Rodriguez, who is the CEO and President of the New England Village in Pembroke. Um, welcome, Mike. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. I appreciate it. Can you tell us a little bit about New England Village, uh, what, what you do, what the mission is, and also how you got to be in the position that you're in? Yeah, absolutely. New England Village, uh, we were established in 1972 by a group of families who were looking for some more progressive alternatives for their loved ones. So we're nearly 50 years old. Um, our mission is to empower individuals with developmental and uh, or intellectual disabilities to uh, realize their potential and to pursue their dreams through the innovative services and community living that we provide. Uh, we currently serve uh, 173 individuals uh, with developmental disabilities. 80 of those individuals live in our 17 group residences. And the other 93 we support out in the, commu out in the community at four different locations. Uh, we provide employment services, day habilitation, and health and wellness services. It's a great organization. Staff is fantastic. Board is very involved and very supportive. Um, I've actually been in this field for a long time. My professional career spans almost 40 years now. First 10 years of my career were in the private sector, and the last 30 have been in the nonprofit side, and with the last 25 of those serving uh, people with developmental disabilities. Wow, that's that's terrific. Now, of of the um, people that you serve, how what are the age? What is the age range? Um, they range uh, really from their 20s to uh, people who um, are in the later stages of their life. And um, we actually serve people through the end of their lives. So we serve folks through um, all the transitions uh, that, that, that they may be experiencing in their lives. And the people, the 80 and, or so that you have that actually live there, do they, um, do they live there 24-7? Is that their permanent residence? Uh, uh, it's their permanent residence. It's their home. Uh, most folks have something going on in the day. They may either work or they may attend a day program. Many of them attend the day programs that New England uh, Village provides or provided up until March 13th um, uh, yeah. when, when COVID kind of hit us. Right. Yeah. So how has, how has your organization had to adapt since March 13th and COVID hit us? Well, it's, it's been a significant change for us. And in effect, our mission has changed and, and our mission evolved to uh, keeping the people uh, whom we serve uh, in our residences, most of whom are medically fragile in some way, keeping them as safe from the virus as humanly possible. Um, it, it's, it's really interesting because the 17 homes are all housed on an 80 acre campus uh, where I'm at right now here in Pembroke. So we've essentially uh, created a bubble around mm -hmm. our community. The only people who are allowed to come in are people who um, are either working here or who live here or who have business here. Um, um, we uh, have uh, significant health checks for staff reporting to work as well as for individuals throughout the day. And every decision that we've made for the past few months has, has really been uh, you know, put up against kind of one ruler, which is, does it make people safer or does it not? So it's, although it hasn't been an easy time, it has really uh, simplified our decision making in some ways, because our job is to just keep people alive. Sure, absolutely. Now, the people who live there uh, clearly are very lucky to, to have that bubble of protection. How do you think this pandemic has, has affected people with uh, developmental or, or disabilities otherwise that don't have that type of support that you offer? Uh, well, I think in some ways it's affected them the same as the rest of us in society in some ways differently. You know, certainly, um, um, you know, uh, everyone's uh, life and schedule has been disrupted. Um, people's access to what they have previously enjoyed doing in the community um, has changed, and, and some people are cut off from that. Um, in our particular case as well, we have people who are living in our residences who went for an extended period of time without being able to see their loved ones and family members. Um, so those are not dissimilar to what everyone in society is experiencing to some degree. But in addition to that, um, you know, many of the folks that we serve can't necessarily 
uh, perceive of what a, a global pandemic is. It can't perceive of uh, why masks are needed uh, by their staff as well as by them in some situations. Uh, for a lot of the folks that we serve, their daily routine is extremely important to them. And so that change in the daily routine has um, required a lot of support on our part so that they know that they're still safe and everything is okay for them even though uh, in some ways things have changed quite a bit in terms of their day-to-day -day living. Right. It just adds an extra layer because they, they really, like you said, a lot of them don't understand why this is happening. Now, what about the goods that's come out of this, the silver linings? Have you seen any? Have you found any? Yeah, I really have. I mean, you know, we, it's, it's, you know, we were already a tight-knit community. And um, uh, we've even become more so. You know, the first thing I would cite is the staff, and particularly our direct support professionals, the folks who are on the front lines. And they've been um, creative. Uh, they've changed their schedule. They uh, have put their own life and their own health on the line serving the folks that we support. Um, and by extension, uh, they've, you know, that's impacted their family life. And in some cases, uh, you know, they have uh, done multiple shifts here, you know, stayed overnight, done whatever it takes. Uh, we have our uh, staff who have uh, who typically support folks in the day programs out in the community. They've been redeployed throughout the organization. So we've had no layoffs, no furloughs. Um, and that staff has been really creative in terms of providing folks with, um, a, you know, a, a, a reasonable facsimile of the daily uh, activities that they had enjoyed previously before COVID hit us. So uh, a lot of creativity, a lot of togetherness, um, you know, in terms of communication, that's really important. That keeps us going. So we do regular audio town halls where I speak uh, with all the staff and we talk about things that are important to all of us. Uh, we've made sure that our staff have been well recognized, uh, well compensated. Um, you know, early on, I had the pleasure of uh, delivering meals to staff who were working each of the three different shifts 24 7. And um, it's just really brought us together as a community. I would say that is the biggest positive by far. That is just terrific. That's and your your the reputation of New England Village is, is just so stellar uh, throughout the community, and it's so wonderful to hear that you were able to keep all the staff and that you've adjusted so well. My my final question is the phased openings that that are going on. Are you kind of treating the residents that you uh, that you serve kind of like we're treating the elderly population that they would be the last residents that would come back out into the world as, as we know it? Yeah, I mean, I think we, um, in some ways, are, you know, purposely lagging behind the, the reopening that um, the greater society is experiencing. And that's because the folks that we serve are generally yeah. fragile, yep. um, as are, you know, the general elderly population, as you just mentioned. So right. um, we're going slowly. We're currently um, planning and building out models for the reopening of our day programs, but we will not reopen those until you know, we can ensure uh, everyone's safety, the folks that we serve, who they may live with at home, and, uh, and the staff as well. So, so we're, we're treading lightly, and in some ways, um, day to day, what we're doing today is not that much different from what we were doing in April. Right. You know, if, if you accept the premise that our mission has evolved to keeping people alive yeah. and making sure that that virus does not, um, does not get into their home, um, that hasn't changed for us. And right. I don't see that changing, frankly, until there's a vaccine available. Right. Now, people that aren't associated with New England Village or don't take advantage of the programs and things you offer, is there a waiting list? Is there a way for people to get involved with the New England Village? Or is it, are you kind of full? Um, well, there is a waiting list for residential, so, so you can certainly contact us directly. And um, we're at, uh, on the web at newenglandvillage.org and um, just uh, make a connection to our residential leadership team and we can get you on that waiting list. So there currently is, um, uh, there's a waiting list for our uh, day services as, as well, which I, I guess both of those are votes of confidence in, in the job that we're doing. But, um, you know, in, in terms of growth, I kind of define growth as, you know, serving that next individual, that, that next family who could benefit from uh, what New England Village has to offer without diluting what we're already doing for the folks who already depend upon us. So right. uh, we will certainly do everything we can to, to, to find that next person who, who needs us and to figure out a way to help them. Yeah, and that's what I was, my last question was going to be, are there any other resources that, um, that can assist people with disabilities and their families if they can't do this through you? 
Yeah, I made a, uh, a, a short list here, so if you forgive me, and uh, I don't have the websites, but if you can Google any one of these, um, you know, these are these are helpful. The Disability Law Center of Massachusetts is is a great resource. Uh, Disability Community Advocacy, which is part of uh, the state, the Executive Office of Health and Human Services. The ARC of Massachusetts is a fantastic organization that has a lot to offer individuals and families. Mm -hmm. And um, there is a special needs advocacy network as well. So if you Google any of those, anybody can Google those, and those are great resources. Or contact us, and um, we will we will direct you to resources that, that can help you or your family member. Excellent. Mike, what wonderful work you're doing, uh, and it's, it's inspiring to hear you, you tell the story, and it's really interesting, and people should um, visit your website and, and just see the range of programs that you do offer. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Thank you so much for being with us, and I'm sure we'll talk again. That's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Great. Back to you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Mike and Julie. If you would like to learn more about New England Village, visit their website at newenglandvillage.org.